So what are some of the qualities of Imam Hanifa rahimahullah as a person as well? What are some things that we can take from him? One of them, obviously, when you look at any of these people, the amount of taqwa that they had, the amount of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they had, the amount of contemplating the Qur'an and contemplating the Day of Judgment. So you cannot disconnect ilm from ibadah. You cannot disconnect uh, knowledge from worship. And that's why when you study the worship of all four of these men, you find that it's incredible. There are many narrations about it. One of them is that there are four men in history, Ibn Hajar rahimahullah actually says this, four men in history that are known to have read the Qur'an in one rak'ah. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, Tamim ibn Aws al-Dari, Sa'id ibn Jubair, and Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, four men who were documented in history to have done that. And there are subhanAllah many different narrations about his qiyam, the way that he would stand up at night. One of his nicknames, because of his qiyam was that he was a pole that was just constantly standing up. Um, also we find subhanAllah one thing that also mentions his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. And this is narrated in, in, uh, in the tabaqat of Ibn, Ibn Sa'ad that he was once praying in the masjid at Salatul Isha at Masjid Kufa. And Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, he started to cry when the Imam read Surah Al-Zalza, particularly the last ayah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ يَعْمَلُ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلُ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَى That whoever does an atom's worth of good will see it, and whoever does an atom's worth of evil will see it. So Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, after the salah, he was crying and he was sitting and he started to make dua. And you know, the, the, the guard of the masjid, the haris, he, he needed to lock up, but he didn't, want to, he didn't want to disturb him. I mean, he's making dua. He didn't want to interrupt his dua. So he waited for a little bit and then he said, you know what? I'll just leave him there. You know, he looks like he's really in deep connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll leave him there. So he said that I, I came back an hour before Fajr to do the adhan of Qiyamul Layl. And he said he was still in the same spot making dua. And he was crying and he was holding his beard. And while he was holding his beard, he said, Oh, you who rewards an atom's worth of good with good. And you who compensates or who rewards an atom's worth of evil with evil, with punishment. Protect your servant Nu'man from a nar and that which will bring him closer to it from the evil that he does and enter him into the vastness of your mercy. And the, you know, this Mu'addin, the guard, he sees him making this dua and, and he's shocked that he's been there the whole time. And so eventually he comes up to him and he tells him, you know, do you know what time it is? And Abu Hanifa told him, no, what is it? He said, I'm about to make the adhan for Qiyamul Layl, meaning Fajr is in, you know, in an hour, Fajr is coming up. And Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, look at what he says. He held the man, he said, and he, and he said to him, don't tell anyone about this. Don't tell, that's the first thing. So the next quality that we'll mention is tawadu, humility. He had great humility. It starts off with his family. His father passed away, Thabit passed away when Imam Hanifa rahimahullah was still not a teenager. And he used to go home and he used to take his mother with him to the masjid, which is a great sign of his humility. And uh, this great mother of his, now remember the story of her, what happened to her. She was a very simple woman, subhanAllah. She just, she was a woman of taqwa, a woman of great worship, but not a woman of great ilm. And uh, you know, one time Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, he came to take her to the masjid and she said, I don't know if I can go to the masjid or not. He said, why? She, she said to him, al-istihada, that there was some, you know, some blood that came on my clothes. And I don't know if I can go pray in the masjid tonight. And Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah said, it's okay, don't worry about it. She said, how would you know? Like it's her son, you know, she's not gonna take him seriously, right? Like, oh, really, it's okay? You know, I can go with some blood on my clothes and things of that sort? And he's like, yeah, it's okay, it's, it's fine, it's, the hal, it's, not, it's not, you know, menstrual blood, it's not nifas, it's not... He's explaining to her the hukum of it, the ruling, it's okay, it's not going to affect your salah or anything like that. She said, I need to go talk to Umar ibn Abi Dhar. Now, who is Umar ibn Abi, Abi Dhar? Umar ibn Abi Dhar, his nickname was Abu Zur'a. He was a da'ya, he was a very well-spoken man, a caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the funniest thing about it, he's a student of Abu Hanifa. <laughs> 
And his mom, Abu Hanifa's mom, like, is like, I want to go ask him. So Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he said, fine. He said, you want to talk to Umar ibn Abi Dhar? So Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he took his mom to meet Umar ibn Abi Dhar. And uh, she asks him the question. And Umar ibn Abi Dhar is like, uh, let me go ask someone and I'll get back to you. So he goes to Abu Hanifa and he says, your mom came to me and asked me, if a woman gets some blood on her clothes, can she still go to the masjid and pray? So Abu Hanifa rahimahullah said, just tell her the answer is yes, but don't tell her you heard it from me. <laughs> so he goes back to her and he tells her that, you know, I went and raja'at al-mas'ala and I went and I studied it and inshallah ta'ala it's okay and you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> now subhanAllah, what was his brilliance like? What was the aql of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah like? And what was he like as a debater? And this is really f uh, powerful because as we said in Iraq, you really had to be able to hold your own. You're dealing with atheists, you're dealing with Christians, you're dealing with... Uh, people of philosophy, you're dealing with all the deviant groups, you really have to know your stuff and hold your own. And even at a very young age, by the way, we said in the souk, these people still used to talk and they used to debate. And in the souk, there was once a man that came, and he was a, a, he was a person from the Romans, and he said, I have, I have questions, anyone here want to answer me? He didn't go to the masjid, he went to the souk. He said, who was there before God? He said, in what direction does Allah face? And what is Allah doing right now? Three very odd questions. And he kept asking these questions and people didn't know how to answer him. They're like, you know, everyone kind of ignored him. So Imam Hanifa rahimahullah, he got sick of him. And he was working with his father at the time. So he's still a very young man. So this is 11 years old. He's an 11 year old boy. And he goes up to the guy and he said, what was your first question? He said, who was there before Allah? He said, do me a favor and count from 10 to zero backwards. Actually 10 to one, they didn't have zero, right? So when he got to one, he said, that's it. He said, can't you go further? He said, no. He said, likewise, we don't go further than Allah, the one. So he said, what was your second question? He said, in what direction does Allah face? So Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah said, do you own candles? He said, yeah. He said, when you light up your candles, they light up the entire room, right? He said, yeah. He said, do they, does it stay facing only one direction or does it just light up the entire room no matter what direction it's facing? He said, no matter what, it's, it lights up the entire room. He says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. We don't ask that question. It doesn't matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the light of the heavens and the earth. Then he said, what was your third question? And as the man was about to ask the third question, Imam Hanifa was sick of this guy. He's yelling and screaming in the marketplace and making a fool of everyone. So he said, you know, people can't hear my answers because I'm really young. So he said, how about we switch spots? Because the man was sitting, you know, he, he put like a stool or something and started standing on it and speaking. He said, how about we switch spots so people can hear my answer? So the man said, why? He said, because two questions, no one heard my answer. He said, the third one, I want everyone to hear my answers. So he said, fine. So he got off the stool, Abu Hanifa stood on the stool. And he said, what was your third question? He said that, what is Allah doing right now? He said, Allah is humiliating a humiliated man and Allah is honoring me. <laughs>